On the recent social stream that Halo usually throws off every Wednesday, we got a chance to see some Halo Reach multiplayer, as well as some very important information, things like modding, content that's being in Flight 3, the progression system, matchmaking, as well as Forge in Flight 3. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news commentary when it comes to Halo. This time we're talking about Halo Reach Flight 3 and all the good stuff that's coming with that. If you guys like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button. As it lets me know, you want to see some more content like this, leave a comment down below where your thoughts are on Flight 3 as well. Hopefully you guys get a chance to get in. I do hope so as well. If you're new to the channel, want to update with anything Halo related, that's MCC, Halo Infinite, Halo 5, anything in between, make sure to tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date with everything going on on the channel and in Halo, so let's get right into the content here. So as I said at the top of this video that 343 held their weekly social stream, where most of the time it's just bringing someone on that's part of the team to kind of get them you know, in, involved with the community, let them get a little face-to-face -face reactions with kind of stuff like that. But this time it was a little different. This time they brought in Dursky and Postums who have been on the streets before, and usually when they're on, something good happens. This time we got a chance to see some Halo Reach multiplayer in action on the consoles themselves which is going to be just awesome guys so as we all know this is going to be a multiplayer focused fight and fly 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 i should say and uh, the great thing about this though is that they also announced that there's going to be forge involved with this flight 3 as well on top as well as theater which is actually super awesome because i wasn't expecting that as uh, Forge and Theater are not going to be launching with the game once the game comes out. They're going to be coming out at a later time, sadly. So this is an awesome announcement. Hopefully all you Forgers out there get a chance to dig in and get a chance to hopefully play some of the Forge mode. Now, I did not see Forge World in the map list that they were showing off. It looked like just kind of your standard multiplayer maps that are going to be in this Forge right now. Uh, as probably I'm sure that Forge World is a huge undertaking and that's probably the reason why that uh, Forge is not going to be on the game this or available at release because it's such a huge map, the biggest map ever created in Halo, and it's you know for forging, and so it's going to take a lot of time and effort to make sure that map runs and plays properly when uh, you got so many different moving parts with that map. It's crazy, and so right now it looks like you just kind of have your standard Forge without Forge World. They didn't mention it, that it's not in the game, but I didn't see it, so. My guess is that it's not going to be involved with this flood. Now, another thing we got to see are the settings that you're going to be able to use when playing Halo Reach, as it looks very similar to your standard MCC layouts, which is pretty cool. You know, obviously, we would hope to see that happening right there. But a very cool thing to show off was actually they added in a few new buttons that you can use to you know, play your game. Uh, for example, they added in a jump, jumper jumper button option, which you guys don't know what that is, means it basically they described it as uh, a lot of people, you know, including me, use bumper jumper as their main low layout when it comes to playing the game. Um, when you're using something like a jetpack, as they mentioned, uh, a lot of times you have to like take your thumb off the stick and press X right, and so then it will hopefully lift you up, but then you're trying to lift up without being able to aim. It becomes a useless ability, well, unless you're using a claw, which I don't claw because I'm not trying to have arthritis by the time I'm 40 years old. Um, <laughs> and so what they added in is the jumper jumper option, which if you enable that, you jump like a normal jump, and if you j press the jump button again, you will activate the uh, jetpack to kind of lift yourself up which is a great ability so you can keep your fingers on the sticks and keep moving and aiming around like you're intended to do, uh, but also be able to use the jetpack ability on top of that, which is a huge uh, quality of life improvement when it comes to uh, Halo Reach, so I'm really glad that you thought of something like that and added it into the game. On top of that, we have some more UI stuff. We get a chance to see what Reach looks like in the MCC menu, which now looking at this, it's kind of crazy to see, see how many game, games are in this one game. We have Reach, CE, Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, and Halo 4 on top of that. It's looking like the modes you're going to be able to have for your offerings are going to be Slayer, uh, what, like Capture Flag, Territories, um, like an acid denial, like oddball, and, and looks like maybe a little bit of action stack involved with that as well. And if I do remember correctly, there's gonna be a 2v2, a 4v4, and an 8v8 mode. And when it comes to the content involved with the matchmaking as well, because this is gonna be a much a multiplayer focused, matchmaking focused kind of uh, flight, is that uh, they said that what they're gonna do during the weekdays 
they're going to be focusing much more in the smaller niche modes, so probably your 4v4, 2v2 modes. And then on the weekends, they'll be bringing in the 8v8 big team battle invasion kind of stuff, so you can t play around with that. Uh, they do mention that each day is going to be offering something a little different to kind of keep, keep, keep people coming back to play, which is going to be great. Uh, talking about being able to play these flights, they actually do mention that Flight 2 or Flight 3 is going to have a Part 2, and that's going to be on PC, which is great. Uh, for the whole time I've been hearing that it's going to be Xbox only, Xbox only, only Xbox only maybe PC if we have a chance now they did sound like they confirmed it right here that the first uh, flight first wave of flight 3 is going to be Xbox only and then once that concludes they'll be doing a f wave 2 of flight 3 on PC to test out the multiplayer matchmaking on that as well which is very good to know that they're going to be testing it out because you don't know how something plays out until you actually Put it out there for people to play now a very good question was asked in th this live stream which was asking about the memory issue currently going on with the mcc if you guys know that the original xbox is kind of holding back the development because the og xbox one is really struggling right now with the mcc as there are so many games to hold on to that the memory amount that the xbox is able to use is pretty much at its limit already before even adding in reach to the, here. So uh, the engineers are really trying to find some good workarounds to try to utilize the memory as much as they can. Uh, Dursky talks about how uh, that's not ready yet, but they've seen some improvements and progress when it comes to um, the memory issue on the original Xbox. And so it's very important to know that that's is a huge blocker. And if they don't figure this out within a decent amount of time, it's gonna slow down the release of reach coming to the MCC and though it does sound like it's coming along it's not done yet but it's getting there the one thing you may have noticed while watching this video or may have just remembered about is that there is going to be a progression system with the release of reach to the MCC and in this flight 3 you're going to get a chance to try it out a little bit now they don't have the seasonal releases or the season pass like thing uh, in this flight it's really just be a uh, XP ranking up to kind of show how, may, how much you've played very, very much like how like the uh, Call of Duty beta re was recently where you still get the rank up in your levels Well, they're gonna be implementing that with this flight as well And they're also gonna be noticing how players react with that uh, ranking system as well to see if player retention Is a little bit higher than current MCC playlists adding in a progression system or a rank up system Whatever you want to call it into the MCC is gonna definitely increase play time to keep more people playing the game to grind out to you know enjoy the game more get more people playing which will improve your matchmaking experience overall it's a win-win so you get a chance to try it out in flight three now a huge absolutely huge game changer discussion that they had on this flight isn't necessarily about the MCC and what's going to be in Flight 3, but it's more just MCC coming to PC because the great thing about that is that we do know modding is going to be available to be done on the game. Now to what extent, we're not 100% sure. Are they going to be like 343 curated mods that you're going to only be able to use through 343 and improved systems like, like that? Or are you going to just lend it out to the public and let them make their own weird anime mods, which would be freaking hilarious. And from what Postums was saying on this live stream, sounded like he's very open to the idea of people just taking the game and do what they want with it. They are not going to be releasing any mod tools with the MCC. They're just going to let it out to the public and you can pretty much, sounds like you can pretty much do what you want with the game as long as it doesn't interfere with matchmaking, which is exactly what we would want. Uh, the modding is going to be absolutely huge when it comes to Halo on PC. Uh, it's really just a huge thing to have, have on PC just in general, just because it can really extend the lifespan of the game. Uh, honestly, having modding involved with uh, the MCC can really get people to keep playing it even when Infinite comes out. Uh, there's a lot you can do with modding. Uh, for example, like imagine, uh, you know, getting out to the modders where they can update the Halo Reach campaign to give it new textures, uh, new lighting, new grass effects, you know, new water. Like you can do whatever you want. It sounds like. I mean, Postums even mentions how, like in Flight Two, people were able to figure out how to do multiplayer matches on firefight, or firefight maps. And he's like, "That's awesome. That's pretty cool." In which that, to me, is awesome because a lot of times developers have such a curated idea of what they want people to experience the games. And with what it sounds like here is that they're pretty much open to the idea of letting people do what they want as long as it doesn't ruin anybody's fun, which is exactly what we want to hear from 343 when it comes to modding. So 
Guys, you can trust me, with any cool mods happen on Halo, which you know what they're going to do, I will definitely make videos on them because it's going to be freaking awesome. So yeah, a lot of information drops to be happening with this last live stream. But guys, uh, for most of what we've seen, you know, you're probably wondering, you're like, okay, well, that's all cool and all, but when is this going to come out? When am I going to get a chance to play Flight 3? And 343 said, when it's ready. Yep, the mantra that we've been hearing since April, basically. Uh, they currently said that there's a Ring 1 blocker and a Ring 3 blocker, Ring 3 being Halo Insiders. Uh, generally, I've noticed though, whenever they do these live streams showing off the next content in the next flight, that uh, generally a flight happens within a week or two of uh, the live stream. So I'm assuming that we're gonna be getting Flight 3 relatively soon, at least guaranteed, I would say, within two weeks. That's my opinion though. Not fact, just opinion on that one. And then we'll probably have flight for the PC or probably the week right after uh, the console one. And so I would assume that they said that it's also gonna be a much longer flight as well. It sounds like each flight, from my impression of what they were talking about, is gonna last about a week long, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, and so I would think one week being Xbox, next week being PC, and then you know, take a month, you know, take in all that data, which is gonna be a lot of data coming in and then, you know, dissect it, figure out where the bugs are, work on those, and then a month after that, probably have a release. My guess is that at the time that we're at right now, I would expect the flights to happen probably mid-October, which would then probably end at the end of October, the month of November, was probably when we would see the release of, probably towards the end of November was when we see the release of Reach onto the MCC. That's my guess. Pure speculation. That's my expectations right there. So uh, we do know that they did kind of touch on talking about how sequential releases after Reach are going to be coming a little bit faster, as in they had to make a lot of infrastructural changes to Reach and to the MCC to allow these games that are happening on PC to come in as well, for all you PC players, I should say. And so keep that in mind. But it uh, sounds like uh, it's coming along. Um, I guess it would probably be a November release when it comes to and reach coming to the MCC. So if you guys like these new informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on the Flight 3 content as well. If you're gonna get a chance to play, let me know in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with anything going on with Halo, make sure to tap subscribe guys because you know where you stay up to date to this stuff pretty quickly. And if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.